Welcome to the School of Love, the place where miracles are normal. Hello and welcome to the School of Love, the place where we learn practical tools based on scientific research and our own experience towards improving ourselves, living life to its fullest and contributing to the best of our abilities to the world around us. I am Dr. Maria Grejdian and I am a professor of media studies and anthropology at Hiroshima University. In my free time, I am doing my best to guide you in building up a life of contentment, joy and fulfillment while applying lessons learned in school to overcome the difficulties, challenges and insecurities of the real world. In today's video, I talk about overthinking when other people are doing it and you're a witness to it. I include this topic in the series Things I Wish I Knew When I Was Younger, which includes small videos on precisely that. Very practical tips, tools and tactics which would have helped me tremendously when I was much younger or younger than today and much, much less experienced. These are ideas which I wish someone more mature than myself would have told me, not even explained to me, just told me that they exist so that I become aware of a different way to look at the world. We all know those people, those persons who eternally think too much. Actually, they overthink. But how do we deal with them when none of Eckhart Tolle's solutions, change, accept or live, are possible? In this video, I start with the definition of overthinking and some of its causes. And then I deliver a five step protocol, which helps you learn to deal with overthinking when other people are doing it and hopefully in time to find some sort of sustainable solution, at least partially. By the end of this video, you will have a complete protocol for dealing with overthinking when other people are doing it, if you choose to do so. It has helped me a lot. Although it took years to improve and I still catch myself getting dragged in other people's drama resulting from overthinking paralysis, who postpone things eternally but at least now I recognize it and I'm able to deal with it. And now first things first, that is two important disclaimers. The first disclaimer serves to strongly emphasize the fact that this YouTube channel, The School of Love, is not part of my educational and research activities at Hiroshima University. It is nonetheless part of my privilege, joy and sense of duty to propagate and implement knowledge, information as well as motivation and inspiration outside the limited framework of academic endeavors. Together, we can build up a better tomorrow for as many of us as possible. The second disclaimer relates to the fact that I'm a trained musician and musicologist, not a psychologist, therapist or counselor. The ideas I'm sharing in my videos reflect my deep going preoccupation with life, my own life and other people's lives and expresses the results of my experiences, research and for better or for worse, my failures, as well as my recovery from those failures, recovery which is continuously ongoing. The idea expressed in the videos on this channel named The School of Love cannot and may not and must not replace the consultation with specialists in whichever areas of your life you might have questions or you might struggle with. If you are new to this channel, at this moment, I would like to ask you to please consider subscribing, sharing, liking, commenting. Thank you very, very much. This helps us not only with that mysterious algorithm, which seems to dominate the YouTube galaxy, but also with contributing to the expansion of the community of humans doing their best to impact positively the world and those around them by discovering their authentic selves and living life wholeheartedly. Thanks again. And now back to today's topic, which is overthinking when other people are doing it and where you are witnessing it. And more often than not, you are dragged into their you know, drama and paralysis from overthinking. So what is, I will start with the definition with some science to recognize it and with a very brief explanation of where it might come from. And then I'll deliver this five step protocol, which, sh which should help you, which should be very helpful for you in um, dealing with uh, overthinking persons when, <laughs> when you cannot change them. Yeah. 
you cannot leave them because maybe they are dear family members and um, it's also kind of impossible to accept it because it drags you down and one disclaimer is that or an, an additional disclaimer is that um, we are all prone to overthinking from time to time so it's not it's not something necessarily um, inherently bad but when it starts to interfere with normal functioning and but more particularly over long term then it can can become a pathological condition like it's close to OCD um, or, or other other conditions where uh, well I'm not a specialist I, I won't talk about that what I'm talking what I'm trying to talk about is how so this this idea of, of having practical tools of dealing with overthinking in others particularly if it impacts you and you cannot really leave the interaction and how how to develop a sustainable solution for that so it's not only about today or tomorrow it's about like for the long term like years so what is overthinking overthinking is this replaying in one's head and talking to others about the same scenarios the same memories the same things which have happened um and so some people so classical overthinking is not it's actually about things which have have happened recently but there is another type of overthinking which recollects things which happened years or decades ago and people just cannot let go of it and talk about it again and again to everyone and if you are close to such persons you'll hear the same story um again and again every time a new person enters their life and what you'll also notice is that um, they tend either to make the story worse like to to add additional de details which make the story seem better than it used to be uh, seems seem worse than it used to be or they tend to embellish it so that the story seems increasingly increasingly better and more beautiful than uh, the way it used to be so how this this is this is also the science of our thinking is when people tell the same story and in time it changes either towards becoming better when the story refers to a positive event or to turn, it turns towards becoming worse when the story relates to a negative event and they talk about it in circles and in loops and in spirals and it's, it doesn't look like they will ever move forward from that script from that story and causes of all that are of course in, in childhood where parents who maybe they didn't know any better themselves they um, they teach us that failing and failures are not acceptable as small children actually um, of course everybody does mistakes and as small children we cannot actually do too many or too big mistakes we are just very limited um, in our uh, actions and in our in the space or the, the amount of mistakes or, or the, the dimensions of the mistakes we can do if we have more or less healthy parents or healthy caregivers but it, when these parents or caregivers teach us that failures are not acceptable accepted and not acceptable then a child who has essentially no control over over his in, or her environment and also no control over his or her inner world starts to replace various scenarios of, of how next time they will they will be much better they will solve the solution in a in a much better way so that they do not fail so that they make their caregivers happy overthinking comes usually from this um, perceived lack of control towards one's outside events one's um, so outer environment and one's inner environment and then <clears throat> playing scenarios in one's head uh, for the next time when things will happen the same they don't but as children we don't know this they will happen the same and then we'll have better solutions at hand at hand and for good events with one uh, parents do not validate the fact that we are happy and then we instead of understanding it's just their problem not mine we start to, to internalize their lack of validation and then we start to repeat those things and the more we think about them the better they seem because we need we have to subtract we have to extract our own sense of validation from somewhere um so how how to how to deal with someone who's doing this it's a tough one it's like also it's, um, i have another video on self-sabotage 
with, with uh, the same way as with self-sabotaging people, you cannot really talk them into awareness, into self-awareness. From the outside, I always say from the outside, things are so clear. Yeah? If we could show the other people, the other persons, how I see you from, from the outside, um, your life would be so much easier and so much better. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. Even for people like me who are kind of highly in intellectual and highly intellectualized, and we see the world very much through this intellectual lens, even for us, um, let's say we have a higher uh, degree of objectivity and we look at things and we question ourselves. Nevertheless, if I do a mistake or if I'm in a wrong pattern and someone tells me about it, first, first gesture is to become defensive. First tendency is to become defensive. Afterwards, but the way if, it, if, it's, if it is someone dear to me, I will think about it and I, I will realize, well, this is how they see it from the outside. There must be some truth about in it. And then I will think about it. But most people don't. So do not even, you can, you can try. They will become defensive probably um, and probably there will be a fight in which you just try to make your point and then don't see it. They don't see it and... Well, this is so trying to impose upon someone your own insights never works. Not even in the case of very intellectual people like myself, like myself. So um, you become aware of them doing the overthinking. You you could give you could test the 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 the, the area to see if they would be a, a open to your insights. Probably not. But then you'll have to work on yourself on, so that you can deal with it if you do not want to leave that relationship. Um, so I, I'm assuming you don't want, you want to stay in touch with that person, you want to, to deal with that person, probably maybe you're married to such a person who tends or who is overthinking all sorts of things and not only recent things, but actually also uh, things which lie uh, way more, more in, in the past. So the first step is develop awareness that this is happening. Make a decision. Do I stay or do I go? Because you cannot accept it. It, it drives you crazy. I know this from my own experience. If you deal with an overthinker, it drives you crazy. No amount of talking, no amount of listening. Okay. No amount of listening will change anything. No amount of empathizing will change anything. So you have to make a decision. Let's say you decide I stay. Maybe you're married. Maybe it's your child, grown up child. Maybe you have to identify what it, um, what, uh, what triggers the person and how you yourself react to them overthinking. Because if you are that close to that person, you must have played a role into it. Yeah? Because otherwise you would have noticed earlier when you were not so involved with the, with the, in, in the relationship or in the interaction and you wouldn't have gotten that involved. So there is, there must be some trigger, something which keeps you stuck with the person which brought you at that level of stuckness with the person and then identify the reward. So probably but in, in getting involved in their overthinking stories, stories of overthinking, stories of replaying the past, story of um, building up various scenarios and worst case um, setups in their brain and telling them, telling them to you Maybe th that gives you some sort of validation, some sort of, well, I am important. Well, I am, I am good. I must be very, very close to this person. There must be, so there must be a reason why you stick there, which, um, and it also contains the reward for staying it. So on one hand, you do realize that this is, this is burn burdening you. But on the other hand, the burden is not that bad because there is a good side to it. And identify these two dimensions, identify, what disturbs you about it and identify why you stick with it. And once you have identified this dimension, so what exactly brings up the overthinking in that person and how it impacts you and how, why you stay with it, why you stick with it. It's important to develop healthy um, strategies of dealing with it. Uh, so, for instance, boundaries are a very healthy strategy. So when the person st starts talking um, again about some old issue, say, look, I can listen to it. I've heard this thing for already for so many times. I can listen to it 
for five minutes, but then we have to change the topic. So boundaries is one way, a very healthy way. The other way is to try um, to try to empathize without getting dragged into their story. So yes, I know it's difficult. You know, you have been talking about this for the past five, 50 years. Maybe we can move on to another story. Maybe you can move on to another story. So boundaries are a very important. The even more important than boundaries is the decision to set those boundaries before the person starts overthinking and um, sharing with you the overthinking processes. So set a time limit. Yeah, five minutes is actually good. And this will have the effect. I know, again, from my own experience, this will have the effect that in time, the person will stop thinking so much about those issues. If you put a, a time barrier, a time boundary, or a time limit to how much you're going to listen to that person talking about spe a specific issue. So in the first place, in the first step, that person will feel frustrated that you're not listening as you used to. Again, another, another reason to overthink even this issue. But in time, if you stick with it, and you have to stick with it, if you stick with it, the person will start thinking, yeah, actually, if I cannot elaborate so much on these old stories, um, maybe they're not so interesting. Another side effect would be that the person finds a different person to share her over or his overthinking stories with. In which case, again, you are liberated from, from, from being um, a, a partner, a member of the, in the, in the overthinking paralysis. So this is not, there's nothing bad about it. The issue is you have to be very aware of the reward because if it happens that the person finds some other uh, overthinking buddies, you will feel some sort of envy that or jealousy that the person has left you from f uh, for someone else. And the tendency would be then, of course, to, um, to try to get it back. Don't. So make it part of this step number four, that in case the person decides to to find a different overthinking buddy, you let it go. You do not try to stop it. And decide this in advance so that when it when when the trigger hits, when the feeling of envy, the feeling of jealousy hits, when the feeling of sadness of, uh, you know, losing someone who actually trusts you so much that they tell you the same stories for decades, yeah? Um, the sudden when they hit, then you have, oh, I knew this is coming. I knew it, so I have to actually allow it to happen so that I can live my own life. Uh, so number five, the final step, people don't talk about it because these are actually heavy tasks we are uh, we are supposed to fulfill, like letting go of someone who's actually close to us, uh, so that uh, over uh, an overthinker who who has dragged and and encapsulated us in the, in this in this overthinking procedures, overthinking um, um, strategies. The final step is actually to develop gratitude towards that person for making you, for pushing you forward towards becoming yourself a better person and towards the overthinking itself, the, the fact that, you know, you could witness it and then you can, you could use it as a trigger for your positive development. So developing this kind of gratitude um, towards becoming, to, towards negative things in our lives, which have actually pushed ourselves towards becoming better is a very good strategy in um, overcoming this sort of emptiness, which comes <laughs> every time we actually leave something negative behind. Yeah, there is, it is an empty, emptiness. Nobody really talks about, you can, you can find it in, in the same time that some people don't want to get rid of their pain because it has become so much part of their identity that losing that pain actually is like losing a part of their identity. But actually there's only good thing, things happen, that actually only good things happen when we let go of hurt and resentment and pain, even if, and then we, allow the emptiness which comes from letting go from from letting go for uh, overthinking and of getting dragged in um, other people's overthinking that emptiness will will get filled with good things and be getting be becoming grateful developing gratitude is actually what allows and makes it possible that that emptiness actually gets filled with good 
experiences and perceptions and processing of the world. So that would be for today. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, as always, I'm looking forward to, um, to, 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 to welcoming you here again very soon. Love and peace to you all. Thank <laughs> you.